Welcome to God with George Ortega. This is episode number 59. I'm recording it on Wednesday, January 13th, 2021 at 9.01 p.m. Eastern Time. What I'd like to do today is uh, go through our basic understanding of God, who God is, what God is. Um, my, my, my guess is that, you know, the, the Old Testament that introduces God, I believe, has a lot of material that, that actually happened. Um, and, um, but I, I, don't, I don't believe everything happened. You know, like there is some instances, for example, where like a, um, a staff of wood turns into a snake. You know, um, there's a few things, um, you know, I doubt at least. Uh, but um, so so I, I say this to say that I, I think it, it might have been the case that some some aspects of their understanding of God. Um, and I guess, you know, this may relate to the revelation on Mount Sinai you know, to, to Moses may have been more of Moses having figured things out rather than of having been told them. Um, that's speculation, but, but, but I, and I say this because like, it doesn't seem necessary to, to receive a, um, a prophecy, to receive communication directly from God, you know, in a spoken language, to be able to figure out some of, um, to really all of God's attributes. So let let's do that. Let's let's go through um, a basic exploration of reality and what that says about, you know, this this idea of God that we have. So um, all right, and and I'm going to try to go through this. In one episode, it'd be good to, you know, go through most, if not all, of God's attributes in one. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do that, but I'm going to try. Um, so we start with, you know, this acknowledgement, you know, that that we're in this reality, this world. Um, naturally, back when the Bible was written, they didn't know about the two to three trillion galaxies out there, each with two to three billion star systems, stars, you know, uh, they, they had no idea that reality was that immense. Uh, and neither did they understand that it had been around that long. And, and by that long, I, I mean, you know, 13.8 billion years, whereas like, you know, if you tabulate the um, the time of the Bible, um, if you, you add it all together, it comes to about 6,000 years. Um, so you start with this understanding that, um, that there, there is something. It's not, you know, and, and uh, you know, that's a pretty obvious understanding. You know, you can't refute that. So reality exists. And um, and then, you know, a kind of a logic. And all right, so with the Bible, they they their understanding was that like this world, this reality, came into existence, was created by God around six thousand years ago. You know, the, the Bible starts in the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. Um, but then that that invites the question, okay, so then um, who or what created God? And so that's a biblical kind of understanding. If you take a, a more generic, secular kind of understanding, a uh, naturalistic understanding of, of, of God, of reality, you know, you, um, well, you, you could go to the Big Bang, you know, what created the Big Bang? Um, and, uh, 
And you, I'm going to actually bypass that because that's the same as the creation thing, you know. So because then, then we, we go to, well, God created the Big Bang, God created the world, world created God. And, and here is where, where we get to this understanding of it, whether we use the term, use the name God, or stay with reality, which I think is, is more logical, then you reach this understanding that this reality that we're in, uh, you know, you ask yourself, you know, well, what caused it or, you know, or, or how long, how long has it been around? And, you know, you, you reach the understanding that at least according to logic, it must have always been around. Because at any time you, you answer that with, well, God created it, or well, this happened, or this happened that created it, the question, you know, the new question always becomes, well, what created that? And what created that? And that brings you to this, you know, endless eternal regression going back, you know, infinite regression, going back and back and back in, in time more and more. So, um, so that's the first aspect of reality that, that coincides with our understanding of God, actually. So like, you know, reality, according to logic, um, seems to have always existed, um, which is like mind boggling, you know, that, that, uh, that's, that's in a certain sense, that's beyond our ability to, uh, to really understand because we have this kind of like a, a framework of understanding that requires things to have beginnings and perhaps ends. I mean, uh, the ending is, is like, you know, I think maybe it's easier to, to see it now, even, even like going forward into the future that, you know, reality will continue to exist eternally. That it's something I think we can understand on some level conceptually, but it's dip difficult to grasp, especially especially going backward though. So, all right, so the, our first understanding is that um, this reality, this world that we're in always existed. Okay, so, so basically from that understanding, we, um, we remember that our conception of God, our Judeo-Christian conception of God, sees God as being eternal and so immediately, right there, you, you get the understanding that God and reality are synonymous. You know, if, if, if reality existed forever and God existed forever, or at least you get a big hint of that. So, well, all right, then, then the, the, next, the next kind of logical, um, logical understanding will, will, will make that even more clear. So. Um, when we think of reality, whether we, we conceive of uh, this earth and this, this heaven, this firmament, firmament where, um, you know, we can't see it, like there's, there's these lights in the sky, and, and they, they, they had no idea that those lights were stars or planets, you know, I, I'm not sure, there's this canopy and, you know, I haven't, you know, it's an, I should look into that a bit more. I guess there are different conceptions of what they, you know, how they conceived of that. But, um, but when you think of reality, you know, the, the definition, the definition of reality, of this world, not just this earth, okay, because the earth is a part of the solar system, it's part of the galaxy, it's part of the universe, you know, or at least the known universe. When you think of, of reality, again, you, you have to, you know, you have to understand very logically, it's, it's, it's an easy, you know, logic to arrive at, that um, reality is everything. That's, you know, it's anything that exists, you know, whatever exists is part of reality. And reality encompasses everything. There's nothing outside of reality. 
you know, there, there may be something outside of our quote unquote known universe or our universe that we can detect through our strongest telescopes, you know, the Hubble telescope and, 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 and other, you know, very powerful telescopes that, that, that tell us, you know, how much stuff is out there, how far it goes out there. So, uh, so that's the second understanding we have of reality, of our world, that it's everything. When we, when we say the world, when we say reality, we mean everything. And, you know, I'm not sure it's coincidental that that's the same conception that we have of God, that God is everything. Okay, so, um, so we've got two attributes of God that coincide with two attributes of reality. And this, what I'm describing is like the understanding of God that Einstein had, that Spinoza had, it's called pantheism, that basically equates the universe with God, reality with God. So, um, all right, everything being eternal, everything being, uh, reality being eternal, reality being everything. Um, and, and that, you know, then, then we get to, um, well, again, just like with eternity, it doesn't have a logical limit. Um, everything doesn't seem to have a logical limit. In other words, you can, you can reason out that you go further and further out from the earth and conceivably you don't stop going further and further out. So, so that brings us to the third attribute of reality that coincides with the third attribute of God, that reality is infinite and God is infinite. And again, just like eternity, the concept of eternity, our minds cannot fully grasp that, you know, um, because we, we, you know, our world, everything, everything else, you know, in our world is contained, has dimensions, you know, has is a, a certain kind of like a limited expanse. So, but, all right, so, so we're left with, again, three attributes of reality that coincide with three attributes of God as we define God. And this is like, you know, I'm using the, the this is how God is defined in the Bible, not, you know, when God introduced herself to Abraham, um, I'm not sure the ancient Israelites had this complete understanding, but but eventually, you know, they they arrive at it. All right. So what do we, you know, the next thing we notice about reality is that it's not random. And what I mean by that is that um, <clears throat> there's order to it. This is like things don't just happen. Uh, things happen because what we refer to as the laws of nature, uh, gravity, electromagnetism, the strong and the weak nuclear force, um, laws, chemical laws, biological laws. So we understand that things don't just happen. Things happen because, because there are forces in the universe that make them happen. Um, and so, so then, then, you know, naturalistically, you know, in, in science, they don't ask the question, well, well, they kind of do in a way like, you know, they basically reach the understanding that these laws of nature um, originated in the Big Bang um, that happened 13, 18.8 billion years ago, that that event, you know, where the, where the, the universe reality expanded from this tiny little speck, you know, the size of an atom to this, like this gargantuan, you know, two to three trillion galaxy universe, um, that it, um, that it, um, it, 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 it is ordered, you know, yeah, all right, <laughs> I'm confusing myself. All right. So like, um, oh yeah, that, that, that it started with the big bang. So, um, 
All right, now with, with God, it's a bit different. So like, you know, it's, um, well, what happened before the Big Bang, science acknowledges that it, it can't, can't, meant, it can't make a statement about, a scientific statement. Science can only make a statement about what it can observe, perceive, measure. Um, but, you know, science acknowledges, you know, science is, is undergirded by logic. Logic is the fundamental tool used to ascertain scientific knowledge. So logic tells you that, uh, well, something created this Big Bang that created the force of, of nature. So this order in the universe. So if you want to kind of like, then like, then the, the, the fourth equivalency is that, um, well, God is held to be all powerful, um, um, omnipotent. Um, and, and so that basically in, in science, what we, we, we have this understanding that the laws of nature govern everything, that they make whatever happens happen. And we have the same understanding of God. <laughs> you know, that like, if something happens, it's because God made it happen. God uh, is sovereign. It's God's world. God, you know, created it. God sustains it. God, you know, makes things happen. Now, like, you know, we, we in, in, our, in our human arrogance, our human, you know, you know, hedonic desire, this, we're, we're made like this way, you know, can't blame us. Uh, we, we've kind of like come up with this notion, well, God doesn't actually control everything uh, and neither do the laws of nature because like, because, um, because the laws of nature apply to, to particles and, and molecules and, and this like that, but they don't apply to our human will. They may apply to our brain. They may apply even to our mind, you know, although the mind is kind of an abstract abstraction of the brain um so but so and and this is like you know and you know we, we've gotten into this before on, on on episodes um we can see how this this notion of a human free will that, that anything is really up to us is, is absurd it's it's not your experience you you do not experience a free will even though you know you you, you experience a flat earth, okay, because you don't see the curvature. The curvature is too small, you know, uh, according to your horizons for you to see the curvature, to see it's north. Um, but you don't, you really don't experience free will. You experience a will. You kind of like then, you know, make the assumption that that it's, it's free, that the decisions you make are completely up to you. Um, so, you know, when, when you reason it out, you, 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 uh, we're definitely not going to get through all the attributes of God. That's all right. Um, so, like, when, when you reason it out, uh, I've got about nine and a half minutes left, um, you, you understand, well, you know, if I had a free will, you know, I would be, and you can apply this to everyone, if they're honest, if a person is honest with, with themselves, they will acknowledge that they are not as happy as they would prefer to be. I had a rough day today, this freaking impeachment. God bless them for, for impeaching Trump and all, but like, I'll be much happier when this is all over, when, when, when the man's in prison or, you know, whatever. Um, but anybody who, who's honest about their everyday experience, about their life, will acknowledge but no, you do not have the ability to be as happy as you want because your emotions are not really in your control. You can, over time, learn to be happier. I, I you know, did, I, I premiered on this planet the world's first television series entirely about happiness, understanding that happiness is really all we care about. You know, and, you know we, can, we can get into that in relation to God some other time. But, um, you know, we, we can't be as happy as we want. We can't be as good as we want. Look, look at all these people who, you know, Trump incites an insurrection. You know, he, he incites his, his, his militia to attack the, the Capitol. And people are saying, 
oh no, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> so like, uh, we know this in our, 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 you know, anybody who's a parent, you know, who's ever blown up, you know, lost their temper at their children who they love very much understands this. Um, we, we not only do we not have any really fundamental control over our emotions, we don't have any fundamental control over our, um, you know, our morality, how virtuous or not we are. Um, so, all right, so then back to um, the reality, you know, God is everything, God is eternal, God is infinite, God is all powerful. The, the laws of nature are all powerful. You, know, you see this? So like basically what we're doing is we're establishing a logical proof of God. It, God is not a concept that we have to rely on the Bible or a religious text to be able to understand. You know, God is a concept that our logic, you know, asking the questions we were asking on this episode brings us to this complete understanding of God that, that doesn't require stories or prophets or, or you know, that kind, of, um, that kind of understanding or explanation. So, all right, so um, now here's, here's um, an interesting one. Um, God is, we hold God to be omniscient or all-knowing you know, God knows everything. And that, too, is a logical conclusion, a logical deduction. Um, and and, and the, 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 the reason, the logic is simple. If you are everything, and if you control everything, there's absolutely no way that you, there's not a way that you cannot know everything. If you are everything, you must know everything. You know, and I'm not really, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that everything is knowable. I'm saying that anything and everything that is known is known to this God that who is everything. So God is, you know, omniscient, um, which is another way of understanding why do we have a free will? Because if God knew 13.8 billion years ago what you would be doing today, um, you, you have to do that. You know, God knows this. It's not up to you. God knew it, you know, before you were born. Obviously, it was fated. You know, you reason that out. Um, so, um, all right. So, and so what are the, 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 um, we, we, we run into, and I should devote full entire episodes to this. I, I will in the future. The, the, the one sticking point that, that, that we run across is we like to consider God all good. I like to, you know, um, but it's not that, it's not that easy. Now, let, let's, let's shift from God to reality, to this, this you know, this world. We understand our, our knowledge of evolution um, leads us to the understanding that, well, no, let me back up. What, goodness and evil. What do we mean when we say that? There's a, a philosopher, John Locke, British philosopher, who defined goodness as that which creates happiness. You know, and, and, then, um, and then evil is, is what creates unhappiness. So, um, so what happens is now this happiness and unhappiness depends on organisms being able to sense and experience pleasure and pain. Now, you know, most people don't realize this, but like in our 13.8 billion year universe, pleasure and pain are a relatively recent phenomenon. They, um, you know, they happened a while back, um, about 300 million years ago, um, decapods, lobsters, crabs, you know, these sea organisms with 10 legs evolved. And they're, we believe that they are the first sentient beings on the planet, you know, that, that, that evolved. So what, what that tells you is that like, 
if you don't have the ability to feel pleasure and pain, there can be no evil or, or goodness, you know, because again, evil and goodness are what determine um, pain and pleasure. So, um, so what that tells you is like, you know, this, the evil in this universe um, has only been around for one fiftieth about of the time of the universe that has been in existence. And, and naturally, you know, if you, if you take the, uh, if you go before the Big Bang, then, then it gets to like, well, a, a teeny, teeny, the teeniest fraction of, of an eternity. So, um, so like with regard to evil, we reach the understanding that um, it's not that God is all good or God is um, both good and evil. I think a more accurate, and I'm, I've got to like wrestle with this a bit more myself, uh, but, but I think the, the more accurate understanding is that it's not that God is good and evil, it's that God created good and evil. God created us as sentient beings to feel pleasure and pain, and then God creates these circumstances that evoke pleasure and pain. And so it's not really God's evil so again that's what i got to wrap with it. it is in a certain sense but you know um all right so um so 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 yeah this 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 concept of evil and goodness requires sentience and this you know the ability to feel pleasure and pain and that's a recent phenomenon in our universe we've got about a minute and 15 seconds left and you know there are a few other attributes um what else? We've covered the basic ones, though. So, um, all right. I, I, um, I hope you're having a great day. Um, let's see. Um, catch, catch this every Monday through Friday on White Plains Community Media Channel 76. If you get Optimum 45, you get Verizon. And uh, the episodes are online on YouTube. Not all of them, because <laughs> I'm about five to ten behind. I guess I'll get to it eventually. Um, and we will, you know, um, it seems that, um, well, we got to get into the philosophy. In other words, like, what, what does this understanding of God mean to our existence? It, it may be that we're, we're created, we're created to evolve to the point where we more and more understand the nature of God and, and our relation, our being a part of this God. That's one thing I didn't go into. You know, obviously we're a part of God. We're just not the part of God that makes decisions. All right, well, I got to get going. Thanks for watching, and God willing, um, I'll see you next time.